G'day folks, Graham here from Colour In Your Life. Hope you're enjoying the series. Well as you see, every week we bring you some fantastic master artists. Now I have spoken to all of the artists we have filmed and each week we'll be bringing you our weekly special on one of our artists' work. You can only get these incredible pieces of art through the Colour In Your Life series and through our gallery and shop at our website, colourinyourlife.com.au or phone now to get this fantastic deal on this beautiful piece of art on screen now. This is a great way to put some colour in your life. G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. We're in the beautiful city of Sydney this show to see an amazing artist, so come along and enjoy the incredible talent that Sydney has to offer. Well, good day viewers and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. We're in Sydney for our artist expose down here at the moment, it's just uh, wonderfully talented people. And I'm with Mr. Patrick Owen Wilson today. Patrick? Thank you. Welcome to, to the you. show. Thank you very much for being here and, and inviting us into your studio. Hi. Patrick also uh, is an artist as well. He's a very, very diverse man as far as his work is concerned. And on the table here, you can see actually one of the finished products of his sculptures. And we're going to go through the process today of putting one of his sculptures together. And he's going to take us through the whole line of where you start, what you do in the middle, where you finish, and how you actually end up with an amazing piece like this. Now, Patrick, 1983. 1983, yes. You moved from South Africa. That's right. To Australia to obviously uh, pursue your uh, your love of uh, art and sculpture. Correct. And your uh, beautiful wife, Lynn, has really been uh, a great support to you over the years of oh, what yes. you're doing. Oh, yes. Uh, to the extent that I think part and parcel of uh, what goes into your sculptures is really very much a part of your relationship with your wife as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, well, you know, the whole thing is that I'm trying to sidestep technology yeah. and do something that uh, uh, very personal. Yeah. And uh, this, this piece in particular that was on at the New South Wales Gallery uh, has quite a good story behind it. Yes. About uh, when it was on display, I got a phone call from a, the curator, one of the curators, they're asking if a young child in one of a group of school kids could yeah. He was blind at the time, he was blind, and he wanted to know if he could touch the sculpture, and I said, by all means. Yeah. And that is the whole thing, because it brings it to life, because if yes. you close your eyes and you feel the contours, and you get an image in your mind of what you're doing. Yes, and they're, so, uh, they're really very, very tactile pieces of work as well. Exactly. But, but in starting these, you... You simply just don't, you know, one day no. start to carve away. You actually start no, with, with drawings, I do. don't I, you? I, I sit down with my sketch pad and, yeah. I, and I draw for maybe the whole day. Sometimes it takes even longer. Okay. And I have to sort of get to the um, emotion and the passion that I feel for this piece. And as you can see here with, with this piece that we're doing today, yeah. uh, just in the last five minutes or so, yeah spotted this year and I thought no that's the one that I want and I yeah. gave it a tick and then uh, from there um, you have to then put it into practice you know so I then take that image and I do a rough sketch of it here yes. as to how I see it okay. developing and to try and get this balance you know and, mm -hmm. and the, the, the feel for it mm -hmm. the flowing lines because the simplicity is that's what I liked about Henry Moore's work is his simplicity sure. and uh, and also try and incorporate an attitude to the sculpture because the, the attitude of the sculpture you know sort of brings forward a, a sense of emotion as mm -hmm. well you know and you can yes. relate to it so I try and get that briefly in this sketch and then I, when I'm finished with that then I start on 
the clay model. So does this in, in any sense uh, represent something to, to you? I mean, what, what is the idea or the emotion behind it? It's, it, it's, a, female, it's a female torso. Okay. And, uh, you know, without all the limbs and everything, it's, mm. it's just capturing the pure passion of what I feel towards the female form. Yeah, excellent. So, well, where do we go from obviously the sketches? We move on to, I mean, you've got a sort of... Is yeah, that, what I do is I make a maquette Okay, first. there you go. I make a little model yeah. like this. It comes from me doing the, the interlocking pieces where I have to build them together to form and I have to create the shape and I have to know how I'm going to model it and how mm -hmm. I'm going to cast it. In this case that I'm doing today, I've decided to make the master saleable. In other words, it's going to be a finished product okay. in polyester resin and uh, polish it up like I did with that other one. Sure. And then if anybody wants a copy of it, I can always do it. Do it again, absolutely. I, I try and, in other words, I try and do the whole process myself. I don't really want to hand it out to some other guy to finish off my work, you see. Sure, but obviously with the bronzing you would do that. Oh, I'd have to do that, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, I can't handle the bronzing, no. Yeah. So we've got from there, I mean, you have wire in there at all? Yes, I've got, an, I've got okay. wire in there that... And what is, what is that type of wire that you've That is in? aluminium wire that I've got here. Okay. This is um, the different armature wires, oh, you, can, yeah. you can, uh, this is very soft, that's quite hard, wow. but that can take more of a load, like I used that on this sculpture here, yeah. but for this one I just took a little bit of this and snipped it off. Um, Alright, so from, from that particular stage there, we've, right. gone at, we've gone to drawing, right. we've gone to the maquette. Now Where we have to set up on the... Uh, creating the clay model for it. And I can see you've made a, a reasonably solid start yes. on it. But, yes, um, I have. Show us, uh, show us how you do what you do. With, um, this is the f more or less the front view. As you can see, yeah. I, don't, I don't spend too much time on the clay. I, I don't go too finished. I, I'll finish it off from this stage and yeah. smooth it out as much as I can because I don't finalise the sculpture in this form. So that goes there. Then I get my clay out here and I'll build up the back. So you've had obviously other influences as well, Michelangelo, Michelangelo, Rodin, uh, Rodin all those guys are all. But they're all very different sculptures. They're all different, well, but they yeah. all got a quality that I draw from. You yeah. see, simplicity of uh, Henry Moore, the yes. Celtic art with the circles and the flowing lines, yes. and uh, Rodin, of course, which mm. is uh, the emotion. If you've seen the ba uh, Burgers of Calais, yes. you'll know, <laughs> know what I'm talking about. But this is, this is the side of it that takes a little bit of time, but it's, it's just to get it done to a degree that I'm happy with and I'll sure. say, right, I'll cast that okay. and then I'll finish it off. Does the piece actually talk to you as you go along? Because is it sort of saying something just to say, well, I need you to take me here? Does that happen to you at all? It does, uh, it does happen where I, suddenly I look at it and I think, now how did that happen? Yeah. It's almost as if you've got some help coming yeah. around, across it, you know, and... Uh, divine intervention. Yeah, divine intervention, yes. Yeah, sort of the muse watching over my shoulder. Okay. But... Um, Artistic muse. Yeah. Who happens to be a phantom. I do, I do believe in that sort of thing, you know, that yeah. your subconscious is also working while you're doing mm. conscious sure. work here. And uh, anyway... We've yes, it's amazing the uh, imaginative process that comes out of your subconscious. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It's incredible. Wonderful. Now what I do is I hold it to the light. Yes. That's the best way. And where the shadow forms, oh okay, dictates to me as to where the line oh, well, that will be. Sense. See, that so makes I now, sense. yes, so I put these little shims in that I've got over here. Mm -hmm. so what's it called? A shim. A shim. Okay. Shim. What I do here is I take an aluminium can. Yeah. And I cut it in half okay. and I cut these little pieces out of it. This is what the can looks like when I've cut it off. Okay. I just take a little pair of shears like this, and yeah. like about an inch wide. And it's ideal, it's thin, it's cheap, and it's um, easy to work with. Okay. I start following the shadow. 
Oh, so it's the little round end that goes in. It's the little round end that okay. goes in. Otherwise, it starts dictating its oh, of course, angle. Of course, you see? Yes, of course. So then you just sort of space them along there like that. Well, I think in, in some some of the other sculptors who have done a comparison that they have to really put that fine detail in. Yes. Because of the bronzing, but because you're using the polyester resin. Yes. You can really just reshape it yourself. Exactly. I yeah. can reshape it myself. Okay. So what I do then is I'll get a. I've got an old sponge that I keep yes. from packaging. Yeah. And all I do is I just turn it like this. I just lay it down like that. Yes. And that forms my sort of bowl. Yeah. With all the shims around here like this. I to make that centre there, I take a bit of clay like this. And then I just block that off like that. Smooth yeah. it out. Yeah. This clay I take out when I do the other side. Okay. Oh, because you don't need it anymore. Yeah, I don't need yeah. it anymore. Yeah. So I, I, I seal that hole off like that. Uh -huh. Then I pour the plaster of Paris in layers. Yeah. Then I add a little bit of scrim, which is uh, like hessian, yes. to give it strength. Uh -huh. And then a last layer of plaster of Paris again. Okay. And then uh, that side is done. I let it dry. I can show you one side. And that's what you get. That's one side. Ah, okay, there you go. Look at that. And these these little nodules. These here? are uh, little keys for the other one that fits on the top to uh -huh. slot into to position it. So it's. So you do then, you do the one side. That's right. And then have we got another side to this at all? There is another side, but okay. I haven't got it here at the moment because. Oh, okay. But I'll show you this. You see, this is what it ends up as. These are the two sides put together. Oh, I see. So what I do is I just tie it up with string. Okay. So at this stage here, I have to put on a releasing agent there yes. so that the polyester resin doesn't stick to it. Okay, well, can we do that then? Yes. Oh, that'd be great. So I've got my release agent here. This is my release agent for the Plaster of Paris. Uh, is that what it's actually called? Yes, release agent? yes, release yes. agent, okay. correct. Then I'll just put this out of the way. Okay. And now we work on the mould. Take a paintbrush, any size paintbrush, I can use something bigger. And this is specially done for plaster. It's ideal for sealing plaster. And you can also take this if you need a shiny coat afterwards, say for instance you're doing some jewellery or something, mm -hmm. you can then polish this sealant, this release agent, and give it a sheen. So anyway, that's how it goes. I'll just run this around until I'm happy with all the edges mm -hmm. covered. Right, so that's about it there. Okay. Now what I do is I pour some gel coat into that. So I'll pour some of this oh, in here. That. That's rich, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You see, it's quite uh, viscous. Yes, it, uh, it runs quite easily. Yeah. Now I have to add the hardener. What I've done over the years, I've got so used to working in small quantities like this that I know more or less how many drops I'll put in there. Okay. So I'll count the drops as I put them in. All right, in comparison to that. Yeah. So if that's 100%. Now I mix it. Now that I've got my mix, I've got my peroxide in there with the hardener. Yeah and I now add it into here, try and sp spread it around a little bit. Yes. Just take this and spread it around an ordinary paintbrush here. Yeah. So I just spread it up to the edge, yeah. paint it all along and just flick the edges like that to get a decent thickness because it has got a sort of a thickness that it, like honey, you know, it'll leave a certain layer on there. Right. Now you just got to wait for it to harden. You wouldn't continue to just sort of keep working that? You just have no, to wait now until no. it just hardens? Yeah, you got to let it harden mm. and then give it another layer, yeah. maybe another two layers. Yeah. And then on top of that you put in um, fiberglass tissue. Okay. And from there you, put, you do the other side I do as the well. other side as well. Yeah. And then I put the two together, which is, looks like this. Okay. And then I fill the, the end. Yeah. I put the uh, clay around here to make it sort of waterproof. Yes. And then I roll, I put an amount into there mm -hmm. as I've mixed here. Yeah. 
and just to just to fill just to fill and then I roll it around yeah. so that it goes to all the corners okay. you can see as, as it runs there like that yes, yes, yes. see it running oh yeah it looks like lava yeah that's right now that's what the final layer will do yeah and you can give it one or two layers just like that just to feel whatever you feel it is and the thickness that you want to get yeah. in the sculpture itself and that's what you do and you wait for that to dry yeah. to set and you do it as i say about three layers yeah. in with the tissue and then another layer on top of it and then you seal it in this form here you in you fill this end yeah run it around and then when you do the final one yeah you stand this on a plastic sheet or i use baking paper yeah and you stand it up on the end like that and what's in here runs down to the bottom and it forms the base. Oh, it forms the base? Yes. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. So that there's still right. space inside then? Yes, this is all hollow cast in oh, other okay. words, yes. Okay. So uh, you can determine whether you want to make it heavy at the base or not. By, by, by the amount of put that you put inside it? No, I add marble dust okay. to the gel coat. Okay. And it comes in like a thick paste, yes. which I put in here very last and stand it up, I fill it up to about there. Yeah and it gives it weight so that it doesn't fall over. Oh, that's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, so it the, really the is. top is all hollow cast and that, but yeah. the base is solid. Just amazing. All right, so from here, we've done that, um, obviously because of the, yeah. the process, we've, we've, Correct. we've gone ahead and, and done a few more of these. But from, from there Once to there, to there. Where, where do we go from that? From end? there, we take this apart, yeah. and you get out your, you get your product out that looks something like this. Voila. That's what it looks like. How about that? Eh? That's just great. There's sections of this that are actually hollow inside. Yes. Is that right? That's yes. just amazing. Because it looks like it's a solid. It's a, it looks solid. Yeah, yes, it? absolutely. But, it's actually but what I've done is I've taken off the flashing that comes here. You know, like yes. you always get a bit of flashing on anything. Yeah. And all I've done is I've taken my rasp like this, which is a excellent tool. Yeah. And I've just taken the edge off like that okay. and when it's at that stage I then take emery paper here that I use oh, okay. which is ideal it's rough it's about an 80 grade maybe yes and I take a piece off like this tear it off tear it off here's the little cork block that I use now that's got a flat surface I always work on a flat from a flat surface like yeah. that and I take it off. Fold it over. Yeah. And then now you assume that the whole thing has been uh, shaped and everything with the mm. rasp. That takes a, a full day. Yes. So as you can see it's not bad. It takes it down pretty quick. Yeah it does not it? There it is. It's actually quite, it's, it's very physical work isn't it? Yes it is very yeah. physical work. Yeah. This is a wet and dry now. Okay. Now you start rubbing it in, shaping it, smoothing it out. But as you can see already, it's pretty smooth there. Yes, isn't it? Now it just depends on how far you want to go with it. Absolutely. I'll bring it right down with another 220 grade. Now you see the red is starting to come up. Yes. Then you can use some cutting compound if you want to take it further, which I will do. You just keep sort of breaking it down in layers. Yes, and layers just and layers. keep breaking it down, correct. So well, as you can see, Patrick has taken us through some various stages of actually putting his sculptures together. We've gone from the initial marquette to the clay model to this particular piece here that he's done for us with the resin, to this one here where you seal it up, to this one here where he's actually filing it down. Now it would take about two, two, two and a half day, days? Two, two and a half days, yes. To actually file that down where you want it yeah. to go. Yeah. Uh, but because Patrick's been so well organised and obviously does this as a living, he has produced another one for us which is almost in the final stages 
And this one actually has some type of cutting compound on it, doesn't it? Yes, yes. So cutting we, polishing compound. Yes. Can we actually have a look at you finish that yeah, one as sure, well? Just sure. do some work on that. Sure. You've actually, um, but it's the same compound that you would generally use for, uh, say, doing the motor vehicle. Is that yes, right? Yes, exactly right. Yes, correct. And it brings it right up. It does. Looks sensational, doesn't it? You've actually had work hanging in uh, museums in Europe. There was a piece that you did, it was about eight feet long, wasn't it? Yes, that was done for the Artists in the Sun International in Johannesburg. Okay. Also, uh, Patrick's obviously being a very diverse artist, does, uh, does a lot of paintings as well, and you can really see the influence, and we'll sort of screen those in as we go along, the influence that uh, the sculpture takes towards the painting and the painting takes towards the sculpture. There really is a common synergy in, in both of uh, the, the uh, mediums that you work in. And it's uh, quite fascinating with what you come up with. Now, as you can see, from, from where we started, this is, this is quite, quite exceptional, from where we've started, and, and absolutely just the beauty and the curves all the way around of these pieces is just magnificent. And as, uh, as Patrick described, he loves the small, yes. small bump in the, in the woman's back, which yeah. is just in here as well, which is just great, even along there with the shoulder That's blades. That's right, yes, exactly you, you right. Just, you just love it, it really yeah. is, it's just beautiful. And Patrick also has some other pieces I'd like to show you, which are just, just magnificent uh, works of art. You can just kindly just get some of that out of the way, bud, and I'll bring these ones up. Right. So as you can see, I have to work out with this one. Just superb. I mean, the, the detail in this piece here. Now, how would you describe this, Patrick? This is uh, an inverted cross. It's an inverted cross. Yeah. So where does the cross well, go? How would you look at it? If you had to cross it, it would be in there like that. I see, okay. There you go. Hey. And then we have another piece, which is this black one here. Once again, very, very tactile. I mean, you can, you just simply want to come up and, and touch the pieces there. They're just wonderful, they really are. All right, guys, as you can see, wonderfully talented man. Patrick, thank you so much. Thank you, Graham. Thank and you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure for me too. And, you know, once again, I always learn so, so much. Some of the comments that we've actually got feedback from, from all over the country, are people that have just wanted to move forward and paint and draw and even sculpt. I think the biggest word that stops us from doing what we want to do in our lives is the word fear. And we get it all the time on TV, whether it be for insurance, funerals, whatever it is. And Patrick's one of those people that put that word aside and has gone on with his life and his career to create amazing things of great beauty uh, and, and great integrity as well for, for what he's done. So, you know, don't ever be afraid to go out there and, and do this. Uh, we're, we're always here to help people like Patrick. Obviously get in touch with Patrick if you want to talk to him about his work and what he does. Very, very worthwhile and just magnificent work. Uh, we'd always like to thank our sponsors as well. Uh, we've got some amazing things happening. Uh, lots of new artists coming on board, workshops, we've got tons of workshops coming up, a whole bunch of things that are really going to make your artistic future very, very worthwhile. But as I always say, remember, till we see you again, make sure you put some colour in your life. See you next time, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
interactive. Richly pigmented and light fast with a smooth buttery consistency that dries to a beautiful satin finish. More creative freedom than any other paint, the speed and simplicity of an acrylic. With the option of more blending time when you want it.